Okay, so quite often in critical path analysis questions, you will be required to draw an activity on arc network from a precedence table. Now, a precedence table is a table which represents all of the activities of the project and tells you what needs to immediately precede it. Um, so, for example, uh, we've got this table here. We'll have activities labelled over here, which are typically written as capital letters. We then have the duration of said activity. Let's make some numbers up now. Um, there we go. And then the immediate predecessors um, will tell you which activities uh, rely on which other activities to have been completed. You have to have at least one activity which is blank, otherwise you can't start the project. Um, so we t maybe three or four activities which are blank. Uh, that one has A, A, B, uh, B, E, and oh, no. Yeah, B, there we go. So something like that. That's what a precedence table will look like, and you need to be able to draw the um, activity on our network from the table. So I've got three examples uh, that we're going to have a look at uh, in today's uh, video. Um, there is um, there is a knack to this. It's quite hard to grasp uh, initially, uh, but once you've tried a few. Um, you, you'll soon get into a, a routine of, of how you go about doing these, um, but uh, be prepared for lots of, uh, kind of corrections and scribblings out uh, when you first try these. Okay, so I've, I've shortened the table, um, so I don't, I don't care about the durations for this video because I'm not performing CPA itself, I'm just drawing the, um, drawing the, drawing the networks. Uh, so I've got an activity column and an immediate predecessor column. Okay, so activity column um, and an immediate predecessor column. Um, so these are the activities. We've got 10 different activities in this network. Uh, and then this represents which activities need to uh, be completed before other activities can be started. Um, so whenever you start to draw an activity on our network, uh, you're going to start with a node, which is a circle with a number in it. Typically, we start with the number one. And then to start off, it's really easy uh, because um, of the, uh, the second rule for dummy arcs. Um, you cannot have two arcs going from uh, between any pair of nodes. Uh, so straight away, we know that activity A will go from this node to a node. Activity B will go from this node to a different node. And then activity C will also go from this node to yet another node. So straight away, we know that we've got three nodes um, for, for these activities to go into. So we've got activity uh, node 2, node 3, and node 4, or event 2, event 3, event 4. Um, activity A... Activity B and activity C. Okay. So that's how we start off um, our uh, network. You don't have to do straight lines, uh, you can do curves. Um, it just needs to be topologically equivalent uh, to, to this. Okay, so we've got two activities which rely on just A. Um, that's B and D. Um, sorry, that's D and F. Um, now I could have D coming off here and F coming off here, going into separate nodes, but that's gonna create extra dummy arcs, which I don't actually need, which isn't a problem when you're initially drawing it, uh, but thinking ahead uh, can shorten how much you write, but it does involve a fair bit of thinking. Um, so just looking down this list, whenever a D appears here and here, it always occurs with a B. Okay, there isn't a time when a D occurs without a B, and there isn't a time a B occurs without a D. So that means that B and D can actually go into the same node. So I could put activity D straight from here to here. Now this represents D only relying on activity A, which is what my precedence table says, and B and D, node 3, is ready for no, uh, activity E to come out of it. Um, also, activity G has B and D as well, but also contains a C. So I'm going to need a dummy arc there because of the discrepancy between these two lines, okay, BD and BCD. Um, activity F, F doesn't appear anywhere yet. It comes a bit later. So I'm just going to pop that into uh, another node, which I'm going to call node 5. Um, just a note on numbering the nodes. It doesn't actually matter the order of the numbers. They just need to be distinct. Um, so you can't have a... Two nodes with the same number. Um, so that's my activity F. Okay. Um, 
So this is ready for E to come out of, as I've already said. Now E and F occur together in this immediate predecessor list. Uh, so I might as well have E going into the same node that F is going into. Um, G uh, relies on B, C and D. I can't bring it out of here because I can't get C onto it because that would affect E. Um, but what I can do is I can dummy this one on to this bottom one down here. And then this node now represents B, C and D because I've projected all the inputs from node 3 onto node 4. So this now represents B, C and D. Uh, so G is now ready to come out of node 4, which I'm going to pop straight into node 5 because E, F and G only occur together. So I can have E, F and G all going into the same node. OK, E, F and G have H coming out of it. So that's going to be a H there. And then I've got two activities left. Both of those rely on H. Um, they've got to go to separate nodes because you can't have two going to the same node. So I'm going to put uh, I that way, uh, J that way to node seven and node eight. Um, that's all the activities in. The problem is I have two end nodes. I've got node seven and node eight. They are both currently end nodes. That is not allowed. Uh, you can only have one end node for a CPA network. So um, to combat that, I can either dummy seven onto eight or I can dummy eight onto seven. Or if you really wanted, I could introduce a ninth node and dummy them both onto that. Um, but that does introduce an extra node and an extra arc. So I'm just going to dummy 7 onto 8. Um, there we go. And that table is now represented perfectly by that network. Um, quite often, it will ask for an activity on arc network, not the activity on arc network, because there are multiple solutions. Um, but this is the only solution, topologically speaking, uh, that uh, will contain only two dummy arcs, um, other than swapping 7 to 8. Um, so um, occasionally a question will ask you to draw a, a network with a certain number of dummy arcs, in which case um, you must uh, oblige. Um, but if it doesn't, then you can have extra dummy arcs, which is fine as long as the network correctly represents the precedence table. Just be aware, though, that every extra dummy arc that you introduce to the network, which is not needed, introduces also an extra node to the network, uh, which will increase your work when you do CPA later. All right, two more examples. Let me go through these a bit quicker. Uh, so example number two. Um, here we've got uh, activities A and B, which don't rely on anything. So in my start node, uh, activity A and activity B. Nodes two and three. A and B. Right, now I've got uh, C relies on just A, so C will come out of there. Uh, D relies on A and B, and E relies on just B, so E will come out of there. Um, so this actually creates an issue, because I can't map that onto there for D to come out of, because that's going to affect E, and I can't map that one onto there for D to come out of, because that's going to affect C. Um, I'm in an interesting situation where I need to introduce another node which maps both of those onto it so that this represents A and B, but I've still got a node which represents just A and a node which represents just B so that uh, C, D and E can all uh, come out of um, these correctly. OK, so looking ahead, um, D and H always come together. Um, I'm also noticing that um, C sometimes occurs with a D and a H, but doesn't here. So I can't have that going into the same node. That's got to go into another node. Um, so I'm just going to pop C into node 5. Um, node 6, ideally I want... Uh, D and H going into it uh, so that I can map that onto there so that will represent then C, D and H. Um, so D and H, well D represents, uh, requires A and B, so this represents A and B, so I'm going to pop D there. Um, 
and I also want H. H is E. E relies on B, so I'm going to put node 7. E comes out of there, and then H can go into there. Because uh, E doesn't appear anywhere else either, which is good. So this now has got D and H going into it, ready for G to come out. And then I can dummy this one on to that one up there. So now this represents C, D and H, ready for F and I to come out of. Um, F, I and G don't appear anywhere in this list, so those will all go into the end node. Um, but... I'll need a dummy arc as well. So I'm going to pop one into there. I'm going to bring one round and into there. I'm going to bring the other one into there. And that's going to dummy on there. Okay. So C, D and H, we had uh, F and I relied on those. So they can be in any order, F and I. You could swap those. And then this one was just D and H, which was G. Uh, so that goes there. Okay. Um, this uh, network now perfectly represents this table, um, but it did take a little bit of thinking uh, to get it down. And if you need um, extra kind of iterations and scribblings out and that's not a problem, uh, just make sure that your final answer doesn't have any scribbles on it. Um, just redraw the network. Um, it's, not, it's not a problem. Okay. And finally, example number three. Yeah, it's shorter one, it's only got six activities. Uh, three of the activities don't have any immediate predecessors, uh, so they're going to go straight out of the start node and straight into um, their own nodes. Uh, so we've got activity A, activity B, and activity C. Um, D, E, and F, they don't occur anywhere in this list, so they're all going to go straight into the end node. Um, so D only relies on A, so that can come straight out of there and go into the end node. Um, e relies on A and B. So this one represents B. Uh, so I need to map A onto that. Okay, B doesn't occur without A, so I can I can map that onto there. Uh, that now represents E. So E now says, this network says that E requires A and B to be completed, which is what I want. And then finally, I've got F relies on A, B, and C. Uh, but if I dummy that one onto there, um, node 4 now represents A, B, and C. Okay, all three of them. So this dummy arc has projected A onto node 3. Then this dummy arc has projected A and B onto node 4. So you can project twice, um, which is why I've included this example. Um, so node 4 does represent uh, a predecessor of A. Uh, and then F is ready to come out of that and then go, and go into the end node. Okay, so that is the, the optimal network for um, that precedence table. Um, okay, so there are lots of practice questions uh, out there. Um, the best thing to do is just have a go at these. Um, it does take a little bit of time uh, to get the knack down um, to join these. But once you've done a few, um, uh, they, they do make sense. Uh, what, what I would recommend is that you just check. Uh, your network represents the table. Um, so whenever I'm checking my students' work uh, with regards to this, I will go through each activity on the network and decide what precedences the network is telling me and then compare that with the table. So that's something that you can do as a student in, in your own answer. So this network says that A, B and C don't rely on anything because they, both, they all come out of the start node, um, which is true uh, to the table. So those three are correct. Uh, this network says that D relies on only A, which is what the table says, so that's correct. This network says that E relies on A and B because of the dummy arc, which is what the table says, so that's correct. And then activity F, the network says that F relies on A, B and C, which is what the table says, therefore that's correct. I've only got one end node and I've only got one start node, therefore this is a correct um, a correct network for the project. Okay. Um, brilliant. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. And thank you very much for watching.